This is Bruce and Studs and welcome on into the channel. Today I am going to be walking you through a painting tutorial about how to paint a Caldas Assassin. Now the Assassins are probably one of my most favorite units in the Warhammer 40k universe because, well, there's just something about taking the form of a trusted individual and then using that trust against somebody that you're going to assassinate. I know, that sounds a little creepy, right? But that's what the Calidus does. So I'm going to be doing a series in which I'm going to be teaching you how to paint a Imperial Assassin. So I already started with the Vindicare Assassin. We're going to be moving on to the Calidus. And then probably going to either the Eversur or the Calexus. I don't know exactly what order it's going to be in. But regardless, enough of me talking. Let's jump right on in. Welcome on into another painting tutorial, folks. Today, we are going to be painting the Calidus Assassin from a bland black all the way up to a vibrant tabletop miniature. And as you saw, we have finished the first highlight of the Calidus Assassin. What I would actually recommend you guys doing is if you have a LED overhead light and you're looking at the chaos black area and the raised areas of the Assassin, is to take note where the light is reflecting off the Model, and that's where you're going to be painting those highlights. So with the Dark Reaper, you're going to be highlighting pretty much like a fairly thick line. And then progressing with the Thunderhawk Blue, a thinner line. And then finally with the Fenrisian Gray, it's going to be a very, very thick thin line as well as a pin highlight just to highlight the highest points. Now moving on we have painted the hair with Memphiston Red and now we're going to be shading the hair with a Flesh Terrors Red. I really like how bold this particular contrast media is and that's why I used it. Moving on we are going to be painting the Poison Blades the Neural Shredder, as well as Phase Knife with Lead Belcher. This metallic color is actually pretty standard amongst all the Imperial weapons and proves to actually make the model pop with different accents and colors because you want something to stand out against the black. Speaking of standout, we're now going to be painting the straps Screamer Pink and you can paint the straps any kind of color that you want but I would recommend something like a pink again because it stands out against the black. Speaking of more contrast against the black, Retributor Armor is a fantastic contrast and that's what we use to paint the bangles and buckles on the Assassin. Now for the business end of the Neural Shredder as well as the Face Sword. I decided to use a purple color. Now you can use a bunch of different colors for this such as red or green which is more standard but I really wanted to do something really special that would stand out so I decided to use Phoenician purple, Gene Stealer purple, and the Chala Lilac for the purple gradient that's going to be on the Face Sword. Now don't worry about the blockiness of this model right now because we're going to be using a wet blend technique later on to blend those areas better together. And with all the areas that were painted in lead belcher, you're going to give these areas a little bit more depth by putting a nice coat of Nuln oil over all those points and as well as giving a little bit more definition on the hair as well. You don't really have to do that, but I kind of wanted to do it. As you saw, we're in the midst of shading the entire model, so the gold points were shaded with Reichland Flesh Shade and then the straps are highlighted in a Karlberg Crimson. As the hair is a very large part of the model, we're going to give it some TLC. So next thing that we're going to do is highlight the higher points with Memphiston Red and then finally really catching the color by highlighting the highest points with an Evil Sun Scarlet, which is pretty much standard what you would do to highlight a red model. Anyways, next we're going to be highlighting the areas that we painted with Reichland Flesh Shade with Auric Armor. And the next thing that we're going to do is highlight those highest points with Stormhost Silver because on the highest points of an object that is in gold, you actually will see that the light bounces off as a very bright silver color. So now comes probably the most complicated part of the tutorial, which is actually to wet blend the phase knife together. So using a wet palette, this is the only way that you're going to be able to do it. And what it involves is to actually blend the two areas of purple into each other so that it flows and has a smooth contrast when it goes from one end to another. 
I'm not going to really go too much into detail because there are a ton of YouTube videos on how to do this properly, actually more properly than what I did over there, but you actually get the picture of how to do it and how it looks when it gets blended together correctly. So next we're going to highlight the, I suppose, business end of the neural shredder with the Gene Stealer purple, and you want to do that over the raised areas that have been painted with Phoenician purple. And finally, we're going to be highlighting the highest points on the shredder with the Chala Lilac to actually make the top parts pop. Next on our mission to highlight pretty much every single part of the model, we are going to be using Pink Horror to highlight the top ends of those straps to give it more pop, more color, more definition, as you want this to look really good on the tabletop when your Kalidus Assassin is pretty much assassinating all the characters that are on the battlefield. Now this is a technique that I use quite a lot. I have painted the eyes with Stormhost Silver and then I have painted the eyes again with a one-to-one -one watered down solution of water and Blood Angels Contrast Red. And from here on out, I believe that this is pretty much smooth sailing. We're gonna be painting the rock with Administratum Gray, shade it with a Basilicum Gray, and then next to what we're going to do is wait for all that contrast to dry and then finally go over the highest points on the rock with administratum gray again keep in mind when you are actually highlighting the sharp edges as you see on this particular rock that you actually use the edge of the paintbrush rather than using the tip of the paintbrush this allows you to get really really crisp edges on the highlights and it looks fantastic as you saw over there now if you are ever wanting to actually texturize the base what i would recommend you guys to do is when you're done texturizing the base to actually put that base in front of a space heater probably around three to four inches so that you don't burn the model so that the texturized areas will dry up a lot quicker because typically it'll take anywhere between I think almost like half an hour for the whole thing to dry and we don't have time to wait for a half an hour so anyways we are finishing up the base right now by adding some grass and then Pretty much, we are done with the Kalidus Assassin, and she is ready to be killing some people on the battlefield. So, Warhammer Painters, I'm curious to know what your opinion is on these painting tutorials. What do you want me to go over a little bit more? Or what do you think that I should be adding to these tutorials? Should I be slowing them down, speeding them up? I don't know. I would really appreciate if you had any comments, and so just put them in the comments section. This is Spruz and Studs, and I hope you enjoyed this painting tutorial. And as usual, I will see you all in the next build.